what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be going over the definitive tier list for the call of duty multiplayer games i saw a couple of weeks ago that drifter actually made a tier list of his favorite call of duty games in order and i saw that and decided you know what i'm qualified to actually release the definitive tier list and tell you guys exactly which games go in the correct order and everybody who plays call of duty should agree with this otherwise you're wrong hopefully you can sense my sarcasm otherwise you're probably already furiously typing in the comment section below with that being said guys let's jump into the tier list if you haven't seen this before this is tiermaker.com uh, this has gotten a lot of publicity lately from idubs with his fast food tier list he also did a presidential tier list and then we had review of the week take the fast food one and take that to a whole new level so this website's gotten a lot of attention lately and then i think that's where drifter got the idea and now here i am telling you the actual order of the call of duty games and i'm gonna be just going in on like release order so you can see down here these are the order in which the call of duty games came out obviously we're missing call of duty one two and three as well as the pc ver the united defensive and whatever those other pc versions were um but these are like the big call of duty games this is when the franchise started really to explode so with that being said let's talk about call of duty 4 modern warfare this is kind of like the grandfather of all of the modern all of the uh, all the call of the duties that came after it essentially um the engine was really good the online multiplayer was was incredible um and this this deserves a lot of respect even if there's a lot of improvements that were made along the way uh the call of duty 4 the gun balance was good there was some some issues with perk balance because we had juggernaut and stopping power and things like that um and we didn't have as cool of kill streaks as we might have gotten later down the line but again this is like the foundation of modern call of duty uh and everything kind of falls back to call of duty 4 and its early success for the franchise so with that being said Call of Duty 4 is going to get an A ranking because it's not quite as uh, good as the some of the other games on this list. But because of what it brings to the table, uh, it's it's definitely up there as one of the best games in the franchise. Next, we have Call of Duty World at War. Now, there's a couple of things about Call of Duty World at War. One, uh, the gun balance wasn't very great in this game. Uh, the MP40 was just the best gun all around. I mean, there was really not that many instances where you should be using anything other than the MP40. Um, and also, it's kind of it came at the coattails of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. And COD 4 was the first mod call of duty that we ever got previously to that it was all world war ii so now that we've seen modern warfare everybody gets world at war and everyone's like oh well we kind of already played a bunch of world war ii and now that we got modern warfare we kind of want to keep playing that so world at war kind of suffered from being in the shadow of uh, call of duty 4 but it also is a cult classic some people think world at war was like the best call of duty that ever came out and this was also the first call of duty game where we saw attack dogs and it's also the first call of duty game where we saw zombies which is a big deal for call of duty world at war uh, but again the multiplayer didn't really live up to call of duty 4 in my opinion um, but it did bring a really really good story and it brought zombies which was amazing so i'm gonna have to put call of duty world at war up here in the b tier even with a couple of its shortcomings let's move on to the big daddy this is call of duty modern warfare 2 now modern warfare 2 if you guys are new to this channel uh you may not know that this is my all-time favorite call of duty game this is the one that i've actually been playing recently if you've seen a couple of my most recent videos i used modern warfare 2 gameplay because that's all i've been playing lately um with that being said we're gonna have to go through and uh pick out what what tier this goes in right like there was a lot of things wrong with modern warfare 2 even though it was my favorite uh call of duty we had the one man army noob tube we had people running around with like dual rangers and dual model model 1887s which was super frustrating we also had commando knifing which drove everybody crazy with the tactical knife and the ninja perk combo so tons of things about this game that drove people mad and of course it didn't really have have good patch support because modern warfare 2 is when the uh, game development studio the infinity ward studio kind of broke apart um so there wasn't that many uh 
there weren't many patches to kind of fix the problems in this game with that being said uh this game is going to have to go into the s tier obviously even though we just talked about all those bad things about the game there's no debating that modern warfare 2 is the best call of duty game uh, that has ever lived with all of its flaws came all of its perks with amazing map design all the maps in this game are memorable and good we had incredible gun balance because all of the guns were overpowered which just makes it so much fun we also had quick scoping uh pretty much started at modern warfare 2 this is also the birth of phase which is a big deal for a lot of people um and modern warfare 2 also exploded the call of duty youtube scene uh there's just so many things that modern warfare 2 did plus it added the tactical nuke and there's just an endless list of things that modern warfare 2 did it deserves to be in the s tier no questions if you don't agree with me uh then click the dislike button and please leave this channel before you get me sick because i will develop some illness by being near somebody who sincerely thinks that modern warfare 2 is not s tier with that being said we have call of duty black ops so now we're back to Infi uh, back to treyarch and treyarch isn't doing the modern warfare thing because that's infinity wards so instead of continuing on with world war ii and what we saw with world at war we've moved on to a whole new era which is the uh with the cold war black ops and black ops did a ton of things really really well it had an incredible campaign mode it also expanded on the success of zombies and in world at war we saw um uh, this is probably the pinnacle of zombies i don't think there was ever a better game when it comes to zombies than call of duty black ops one um kino is just the best zombie map in my opinion it's super stale now because i played it so much but um this was for me the best zombies game it ever and and all the and all the call of duties to come um it also incorporated a lot of the things from call of duty modern warfare 2 in terms of customizable kill streaks um we saw really really great maps in in call of duty black ops um this was the first call of duty that had nuketown plus again this game like i said chopper gunner hello that's absolutely amazing um but there were some issues the gun balance was a little bit meh um the connection was definitely um a little bit worse in my opinion than some of the previous call of duty games that we saw but with that being said it is still an a tier game um black ops one was a classic um instant classic super super fun call of duty the multiplayer was incredible zombies was incredible campaign was incredible there's really not much else to say about it besides the fact that we saw a couple of connection issues we didn't see any tactical nuke in the game um so there was a couple of things that didn't make it up to the s tier with that being said let's talk about modern warfare 3 back to infinity ward and now we see uh the game be developed by people a couple of new faces in the studio because we, like i said we saw falling out with mw2 modern warfare 3 at the time got some slack for essentially being a uh kind of being like a almost like a modern warfare 2 dlc right a lot of people said that a lot of the guns were the same the game felt and played the same um there were similar kill streaks like everybody thought that it was kind of just a remake of modern warfare 2 just new maps new a couple new guns a couple new kill streaks and that's it um but i strongly disagree modern warfare 3 in my opinion was an incredible game i have very vivid memories of playing this game um back when it first came out and i think that this is definitely one of the best games in the franchise no doubt um we saw really powerful guns uh both primary and secondary the maps in this game were very very fun we saw a ton of things in modern warfare 3 were really really good um, this was the first time that we saw the kill streak uh, package change. So you could do regular kill streaks, or you could do support kill streaks, or you could do um, the kill streak. I don't remember what it was called, but you would get different perks at different kills. Um, and if you had hardline as the first one, every two kills you would get uh, a new perk, and you could choose which perks you wanted. And after I think seven kills, you had all perks, which was you just ran around the map like an absolute demon, which was amazing plus we saw the moab which was uh, a huge improvement over black ops 1 because now we have another amazing kill streak to go for so with that being said modern warfare 3 also in the a tier and the reason that it didn't hit s tier is because we didn't see anything like zombies um we saw some sort of like elimination survival mode where there were endless waves of um enemies shooting at you it wasn't as good as zombies everybody knows that um and again the support kill streaks were meh i didn't like juggernaut i thought that that kill streak was just super annoying uh to play against um and ultimately it just didn't have the same flair that modern warfare 2 had it didn't really innovate as much as modern warfare 
software 2 did but it was still a very good successor to that series um with that being said let's move back to treyarch with black ops 2 black ops 2 is widely known as being one of the best call of duty games in the uh, franchise and you know there was not that much bad that i could say about black ops 2 i would say the worst thing about black ops 2 um was maybe the gun balance uh and i know that that's gonna piss a lot of people off because a lot of people said that black ops 2 is like the most balanced uh game when it came to gun balance but I'm a fan of Modern Warfare 2 gun balance where all the guns are super strong and in Black Ops 2 we didn't really have that. We had a lot of usable guns, right? We had the PDW, the MSMC, I forgot what the three round burst rifle was, but there's a lot of really good guns in Black Ops 2. Um, and with that being said, gun balance was, was really good, but it wasn't as good as Modern Warfare 2 in my opinion. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that but again we're talking about the definitive list so this is not this is not about opinion this is about facts only we're only talking about facts um and we saw a ton of awesome kill streaks in black ops 2 we saw the load star um monitor for three of the reaper i believe right so that was really cool innovation there we saw the swarm kill streak come back or a start here we saw the dogs attack dogs came back in this game which was amazing um so we had amazing kill streaks amazing guns amazing multiplayer experience really great maps and that just puts black ops 2 up in the s tier and if that wasn't enough we also had amazing zombies amazing and zombie experience in this game and this is also the best competitive experience we've ever had we somehow call of duty can't recreate the black ops 2 competitive experience i don't know why that's so hard but apparently they can't do it so with that being said black ops 2 had a ton going for it and we uh have to drop it in the s tier that's a that's a clear s tier uh game right there moving on to the next game in the uh franchise we're talking about call of duty ghosts this is the one that everybody loved to hate when it came out and now that when we look back we we're saying well it actually wasn't that bad um but the thing with ghosts is that it took it didn't do anything amazing right so we had infinity ward made ghosts and we saw call of duty modern warfare modern warfare 2 and modern warfare 3 they came out in succession they all had great campaigns great multiplayer experiences and they all innovated in their own way and expecting a new game from infinity ward everybody was super hyped because oh my god we're gonna get another modern warfare game and instead we got call of duty ghosts and instead of playing just like modern warfare 3 and modern warfare 2 did um we saw them change a lot of things with the guns we saw way worse kill streaks the maps weren't as good although they were still pretty good if you go back and play them they were pretty good um but we saw things like the honey badger come with like uh pre-installed silencers and they did all sorts of weird things um the attack dog kill streak was a five, i think a five kill streak super annoying to run into that all the time we also saw the uh was ims where you it's like an ultra claymore basically um and that was kind of annoying but also fun to play with so looking back call of duty ghost wasn't as bad as we thought but at the time it didn't innovate and it actually removed some of the things that we loved about the modern warfare trilogy and for that we're placing it right here in the I'm gonna put it in the C tier because again you could go back and play it and it's not that bad um, but it just didn't innovate for the time and it wasn't a true successor to the modern warfare trilogy let's move on to advanced warfare Call of Duty Advanced Warfare tried to freshen up the entire franchise. Um, this game was made by Sledgehammer, so this is the first time that we're seeing a new development studio uh, come in and make it a three-year cycle. Sledgehammer decided to change things up and add exo movement and bring us far into the future. This is the first time we saw boost jumping jetpack stuff and uh at first everybody loved it i don't know if you guys remember this but when the game first dropped everybody loved the exo movement because it was very fast and it made the game feel very different and very new and very fresh which is what we needed coming out of call of duty ghosts with that being said this was probably one of the worst games in terms of microtransactions because supply drops literally had pay to win guns in them i don't know if you remember this um but the obsidian steed and we had a whole bunch of guns that were in the uh, supply drops that were noticeably more powerful than the based guns in the game and to get these guns you had to spend a lot of money on supply drops and there was not a good way to earn these supply drops without spending money um 
with that being said we also saw really good competitive play this year we saw a really fun search and destroy zombies didn't live up to what treyarch had been doing at the time kill streaks were meh at best they weren't nearly as good as the model warfare trilogy or as the black ops um games at the time so we didn't see great kill streaks. We saw good guns and we saw probably some of the best cosmetics that we've ever seen in Call of Duty, although they were very expensive. So a lot going on for Advanced Warfare. Um, a lot of people hated this game, myself included. I'm going to drop it here in the C tier uh, because, you know, it, it's just, it's just like man they did so many things good and then so many things even more things bad and at you know it's just you can't really it can't go anywhere right like there's too many bad things to bring it up and too many good things that bring it down so we're going to drop it right in the c tier um ultimately it's it's it had its time and it aged terribly and um with that being said it's it's in c tier for sure next up we have black ops 3 so this is the third black ops game to complete the trilogy later to be broken by a fourth uh, entry in the series black ops 3 took the exo movement from advanced warfare and changed it to a whole new uh, brought it to a whole new light it made it a lot slower but also you know kept uh, kept it interesting we kept that 3d movement um and you know it, Black Ops 3 at first was amazing, right? I, nobody's going to disagree with that. The first three to six months of Black Ops 3, probably some of the best Call of Duty gameplay we've had in a really long time. Um, Black Ops 3, to me, got really boring after the six-month mark because then they patched... Uh, well, they patched everything. They nerfed all the good guns. Uh, they nerfed sound and footsteps. They just completely ruined the game after the six month mark um so with that being said you know the game started off in probably a tier um but i'm gonna have to drop it down to b tier because the patches like i said the patches ruined the game they ruined the gun balance they made the guns really really bad really boring to use um it lowered the time to kill we lost the footstep volume that we had at the beginning but with that being said there were still some cool guns some of the maps were okay um the competitive scene was pretty cool for black ops 3 as well the kill streaks were meh we didn't really see anything exciting for that but we did see dark matter which was a really cool um addition to the black ops uh, franchise at the time which was awesome i got dark matter for me which means i played it a ton so i can't really say that it was a bad game um but i do think that they had a gem when it launched and then they just slowly ruined it over time which just blows my mind why they would do that but regardless um black ops 3 still a good uh game in terms of the call of duty franchise but to me does not live up to the legacy of the top five here um with that being said infinite warfare came next and my god uh <laughs> wow can i just say wow like infinite warfare is the the call of duty franchise would be in a better position now if we literally didn't have infinite warfare like if infinite warfare just did not come out and we were forced to play black ops 3 for another year we would actually be in a better position than we were for the year of infinite warfare because infinite warfare we saw they did ridiculous things with guns and guns that you could get from supply drops you could only get nukes with certain guns um the spawn system was garbage the gun balance was garbage there was nothing innovative from this game um that was fun right we saw black ops 3 change the movement system infinite infinite warfare stole the same movement system um the maps were atrocious all of the maps in this game were forgettable and also terrible and also unimaginative like they, they were the worst maps we've ever seen in a call of duty game by far um nothing good to say about infinite warfare literally nothing uh, i heard the campaign was good but the multiplayer was so bad that it literally dwarfed any sort of success that infinite warfare could have had in the campaign department um we did see it bundled with modern warfare remastered which again that's that's an incredible game because it's essentially mw uh, uh, call of duty 4 but with better graphics and a couple new camos and things like that but regardless that cannot save infinite warfare it was abysmal um i'm actually offended i'm offended by infinite warfare because it was just a kick in the teeth for, as a call of duty player like they released this absolute mess just disgusting i don't think we ever got leaderboards right like it, it was a complete disaster um nobody liked this game i i honestly don't think anybody liked it in my opinion it just was not good um moving over to call of duty world war ii now we are back to sledgehammer and this is sledgehammer's second uh 
a time up at bat and instead of going super futuristic with the game they actually brought it all the way back to world war ii which is what we saw with call of duty world at war and that was the last time that we played call of duty world war in the world war ii era world war ii setting um and you know it's interesting because after advanced warfare the near the end of advanced warfare everybody was like okay i'm kind of sick of this double jumping thing and then black ops 3 came out and improved it and everyone was like okay not bad but near the end everyone's like okay now we're really like i'm really done with this thing let's get boots on the ground and then infinite warfare came out and became like the most disliked Call of Duty trailer in history because of the double jumping that we saw now that that's being said in uh, sledgehammer thinks okay well everybody hates double jumping so let's just go back to the roots and just start with world war ii again and i commend them for doing it the game visually looked amazing the sounds we have not had better gun sounds foots like uh not like the actual sound um quality was probably the best out of any call of duty in my opinion i think this game sounded amazing like sometimes i played the game just because it sounded just so good um but they absolutely they didn't have a perk system right we had a completely destroyed creator class system like absolutely abysmal um Kill streaks were not very good gun balance wasn't very good some of the maps were okay but the problem was the game shipped without enough content right we had like what seven maps at launch nine maps at launch something like that we didn't have that many guns uh it just there wasn't much to do with create a class or anything like that so the game just flopped from the from the get-go um it was hyped up and then it just under delivered like heavily under delivered um apparently around the six month mark we saw a different team take over and they kind of revamped the multiplayer experience and made it better from what i hear um but you don't get that much time to fix your game like i'm sorry you don't get six months the like the consumer's attention span is not that long uh there was a million other games to play and at this time fortnite was exploding so there was no reason to play modern uh, call of duty world war ii for more than a month or two after we realized how terrible it was regardless of whether or not they tried to save it near the end it doesn't really matter uh because the game just under delivered and it wasn't very good and with that being said world war ii gets put in the f tier um again there were some cool things about it but it held no one's attention and it was not that innovative and there wasn't enough content when it dropped in the base game finally call of duty black ops 4 what are we gonna do with you bro black ops 4 it's supposed to be the successor to black ops 3 which as you see is in the b tier where is it gonna go well black ops 4 we go back to boots on the ground it's a slight future game it's a near future game right so it's not modern but it's a little bit in the future um specialists make a return which were are terrible right specialists no fun the first time around they were okay but now they're just a crutch for bad players um gun balance is not good uh, in this game it's just not good uh the kill streaks not good um essentially they removed the campaign for a battle royale mode which is also not good um blackout in my opinion is just not good i mean let me clarify battle royale games aren't fun so that's why i don't like blackout um battle royale games essentially are 10 minutes of running around the map collecting bullshit and then you die instantly to a sniper shot or something like that and you just wasted 15 20 minutes of your life running around an empty barren map yes it's fun with some friends and i do think blackout is a bit better than something like um uh pub g or maybe even apex legends so blackout as far as battle royales go is good but the entire genre of battle royale is just boring to me um so multiplayer failed battle royale is not my cup of tea no campaign uh zombies i guess was okay but it wasn't nearly as good as black ops one or two um so with that being said it's gonna actually go in the d tier even though i just said terrible things about the game um it was still better than infinite warfare and world war ii i mean it was at least playable for a little while um and the fact that that's the point that that get like you get points for being merely playable is is sad because these two games were barely playable if at all um so black ops 4 gets tossed in d tier it had very terror it was anti-consumer for sure um there's just not many good things about black ops 4 um so it has to sit in the d tier for me the game just didn't grip me the gun balance again terrible kill streaks terrible there just wasn't anything very redeeming about black ops 4 other than it was a slight improvement over the previous two entries which made it at least playable
with that being said guys thank you so much for watching drop a, drop a comment down below telling me what games you would place in what order um, and if you want you can go to tiermaker.com and you can create your own tier list and if you do make sure you send it to me on Twitter or on like a DM on Instagram or something so I can see it if you enjoyed the video make sure you drop a thumbs up subscribe if you're new around here and if you want to see more videos then you can go ahead and hit that bell button so you'll be notified every time that I upload if you don't follow me already on Twitter and Instagram go ahead and do that because anytime that I upload a new video or I go live I post there first and you might not get the video in your sub box but you will see it on social media with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omni York and I will talk to you guys again soon peace